I'm Johannes Debos, music director of the Canadian Opera Company in Toronto. I've led the acclaimed CUC Orchestra for more than a decade. And I'd like to introduce you to some of my incredible colleagues. In our last episode, we looked at the heart-wrenching La Traviata. Today, we're changing pace to something more of a political thriller. Tosca by Giacomo Puccini is set in 19th century Rome. The story focuses on a pair of young lovers, the painter Cavaradossi and an opera singer called Floria Tosca. All of the action in this opera takes place over the course of a single day. So, as you can imagine, it's intense. It all comes to a head in Act 3. And that's where we encounter Il Ucevan Le Stelle, a showpiece for the clarinet. To dive into this particular piece of the score, I wanted to reach out to Dominique Desotel. Hello, Dominique. Hi, Johannes. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that you can join us today and in this ambiance here on the stage of the Four Seasons Center. And my first question would be, why this instrument? <laughs> what happened? How did you get to the clarinet? Also, how did you get into opera? Mm -hmm. I got to the clarinet possibly by accident. <laughs> And um, I didn't grow up in a musical family. Uh, a lot of you know, colleagues have, and, and I have not at all, but... We share that, actually. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I played, you know, it was mandatory to play recorder flute in, in elementary school. We share that, too. <laughs> there you go. And I loved it. I was very good at it. And, uh, um, and, and, you know, so I thought, oh, maybe one day I can play saxophone because I knew Supertramp and Pink Floyd oh. and, and these bands have great yes. uh, saxophone lines and stuff, right? <laughs> so I thought, oh, saxophone is cool. So I'll try saxophone at some point. I liked music, I, but I, I didn't practice much. I was not, it was not captivating that much. There was something that I loved about music, but maybe it was not the instrument. And so, you know, played a little bit that year. And at the end of the school year, basically, or maybe a couple months before the end of the year, our teacher said, oh, let's put desks. It's such a pre-COVID thing, but like put desks and we'll all walk around and try the instruments, right? Um, and so I got to these, all these desks, oh, trumpet, oh, trombone. I was interested, French horn. Uh, clarinet, okay, sure. It was, the, it was sort of the less cool uh, single reed instrument. And tried the clarinet, I played a low C, and uh, it was a magical moment. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, sort of a, this, this sound wrapped me. And I said, I said to the teacher, I must start playing the clarinet right away. Can I take a clarinet today? Home? Oh, this is fascinating. And yes, please. How would you describe the, the difference playing on a, on a stage as a symphony orchestra versus sitting in the pit? Um, as a member of an opera orchestra? When we're on stage, we're, we're symphony musician. Of course, it's, it's the, I mean, it, it is the show. In the pit, we serve such a, a bigger... <laughs> uh, a higher purpose. <laughs> bigger than life, yeah, purpose, kind of a, you know. There are singers, there's the staging, there's, I mean, this massive place here, all the people working backstage, all the people that prepared the sets, the costumes, the, yeah. the on and yeah. on and on and on and on and on. And, and yet we are there, um, same size of orchestra, yes, under the pit or slightly you know, in front, under, um, and we play a show that's sometimes three, four hours. We were going to play Parsifal six hours, there, almost six hours. It's wonderful how you describe that, uh, sort of the operatic world and uh, the many, many people that come to play when it, when it comes to opera. And therefore, I would say it makes opera the most collaborative art form of all art forms, maybe. And, and then, of course, you're exposed to the unique power of the human voice. I think that's, for, for me, the more I'm doing opera, the, the more I'm getting excited about this. Well, of course, I mean, we all want to sing yes. when we play. 
it, it couldn't be a better segue to, uh, to Puccini, the composer we are kind of uh, meeting today with his uh, famous opera Tosca. Puccini, I, I would say, is, is often um, connotated with a roller coaster of, of emotions, yeah. um, vividly expressed. Could you give us some, some ideas on that, how that feels actually when you play Puccini? Well, in opera, oftentimes, but especially in Puccini, it's sort of, it seems like this really nice, doughy, elastic, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we feel that as we play, we are immersed in, in, in music that is quite um, dense at times and, and very active. And also where the orchestra has a role that seems as important as what's happening on stage. Oh yeah, yeah. I often, I often feel, or I often say that, that the, the heart of an opera beats in the pit. Um, and maybe Puccini is one of those composers where you can really uh, sense that, where, where this becomes real. Yeah. And um, of course now with Tosca, uh, we wanted to talk, we wanted to talk about this very special moment in act three, when your instrument is um, well, in the spotlight. Cavaradossi, believing this is sort of uh, the last moments of his life, asking uh, the guy uh, in his prison to do him a last favor, and he wants to write his farewell letter, right? Yeah. And then comes this melody in your instrument that precedes the, the aria, E lucevan le stelle. Yeah, I, I like to put myself in, say, the sh shoes of the character or what is happening in the story. I think any good artist or striving to be a good artist uh, needs to have a tremendous amount of empathy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And to really, um, what if it was me? What if I was going through this moment? There are regions of um, sort of shades you can uh, shades you can reach with your instrument yeah. um, that are almost unreachable for any other instrument. Yeah. The, the piani, the pianissimi, the softness of yeah. tone um, that pulls us all in into this moment yeah. is so. Um, uh, yeah, I have no better word. It's magical. Yeah. Simply magical. Yeah, it's the, it's the way that 